Alright, this is a section of my uh, K8048 pick development board. Alright, big deal. I'm blinking an LED. What do you need to blink an LED? Well, you need to turn it on and off and you need to put time delays. Delay it off and then delay it left on so you can see it. Otherwise, it's just going to appear like it's on all the time and a little dim. So we're going to look at software timing loops. And in a separate video, I'll look at uh, hard timer based, hardware timer based timing loops. In another video, I illustrated how to use timer zero to generate delays. That involves essentially loading a value into the timer, setting the preset, and then checking the overflow flag to see if the timer had overflowed and thus go on from there. This is going to be different. We're going to use the overflow flag. We're going to use the overflow to trip an interrupt. Again, briefly, let's look at our interrupt logic in the PIC 16F84A, and this also exists in the 628A as well. Going back over here, we have to set the timer zero interrupt enable bit, and we have to set our global interrupt enable. All right, once again, this is my timer zero block diagram. Like the timer zero non interrupt video, we're going to set this for a Remember, once again, our frequency of our oscillator is 4 megahertz. Divide it by 4, we're going to use 1 megahertz. Divide it by 256 again. That is, we're going to set, we're going to clear the TO bit 5 in the option register. We're going to set zero bits 0, 1, and 2 in the option register to divide by 256. And we will select that with bit 3 by clearing it. Then we send the uh, timing pulse to timer 0 where we will put in a preload value and when this over when the timer overflows at a count of 256 it will trip the interrupt flag. This time and that is set in the interrupt control register bit 2. Okay, this is our setup routine. We're going to, of course, we're going to set up once again um, timer zero for an internal clock, positive edge, prescale 256. That's what this line is here. Move literal to W. This value, we're going to store it in the option register. Of course, we had to um, return at this point we're going to return back to bank zero. This is just a simplified cut down version of it. I came up with a formula roughly like this. Every interrupt cycle is going to be about 50 milliseconds if I use a preload value of 60 in the timer zero register. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up for the first time. Now I have to do three things to get the interrupt to work. I have to set the global enable bit in the interrupt control register. I have to set the timer zero interrupt bit, T-O-I-E, in the interrupt control register. And I have to clear the timer zero interrupt flag or you won't get an interrupt. And I'm going to preload a variable count, CNT, with 10, 10 times 50 milliseconds, or um, for instance, was going to give me five, a 500 millisecond delay. All right, we set up the physical, the electronic parameters for timer zero back in setup. This is my interrupt service routine or code, and this is where the fun begins. Remember, moment, a moment ago, I told you I preloaded a count into variable CNT, which is count. 
what's the first thing that I'm going to do? I'm going to decrement count, and I'm going to skip the next line if it's zero. It is apparently not the first time coming in going to be zero. So I'm going to go to dollar sign plus seven. I'm going to jump seven. I'm going to add seven to the program counter. What's going to happen here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. It's going to clear the interrupt uh, timer zero interrupt flag so we can have the next um, interrupt and then return from interrupt and go back to doing whatever the heck you're doing in loop. In fact, there's nothing going on in loop, I don't believe. Nope, nothing is in loop. This routine here is actually what is toggling the state on the LED. After it takes seven trips back to loop, it's going to come back and it's finally going to be zero. The go to plus seven is going to be skipped. Now I'm going to move literal to duct. I'm going to move into my working register one. Then I'm going to XOR that value to toggle the bit on zero or four or wherever I happen to have it in the port B file. That's where you see your LED blinking. Now I'm going to move a value once again of 10 back into count. I'm going to go ahead and preload uh, 60 back into my timer zero register. I'm going to, like before, clear the interrupt control register flag and off we go again. And it starts over. And that's how it works. The You can have the interrupt routine blink the LED for you or do anything else, or you can sit around and use it as a time delay without checking the flag. So that's a brief rundown of using timer zero interrupts uh, for a delay. Thanks for listening to the video. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.